So we're up to the solo. We're going to split this into three separate parts. And then after those three parts, there's a solo melody. And after that, there's a solo melody harmony. This is the first bit. Kind of like that. The first thing we're doing is we're playing two bars of the sixth fret on the third string and second string, and we're gradually bending the strings for the first beat. So one, two, three, four, but only ever so slightly. Um, it's not quite a half step bend. Two, three, four. But once we have got past the first bar and we're into the second bar, we're going to let it return back to pitch that bend. So we're going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then kind of by the last two beats, so beat three and beat four in bar two, you're going to let it just ring out back where it started at the very beginning without a bend. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's a bit of a weird thing. I don't know why Kirk Hammett's doing this, but there you go. It's a bit of a weird start to have a whole two bars worth of <laughs> just that. Then what happens, so we're going to pick the fourth fret twice with our first finger on the fourth fret. The second one is kind of staccato. I think Kirk Hammett kind of messed up. It's kind of more like noise, that second one. But I'm playing it clean here. We're then going to put our little finger on the fourth fret of the second string. We're going to pick it. And then we're going to pull off to the fourth fret. So, so far we've got... So the first two were quavers. One and. Now we're going to be in semi-quavers for the rest of this whole entire bit, starting with the seventh fret. So it's going to be one and two E. Then we're going to go to the sixth fret on the third string with our third finger. We're going to pick this down and then we're going to return to the fourth fret in a minute. But when we turn to the fourth fret, we're going to do this idea six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then after it's done that six times, it ends on the fourth fret. So this is how the whole lick sounds. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the fourth fret on its own. As you can see, I'm counting the first one is when you start on the fourth fret. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the fourth fret on its own. Full speed. And I should note that I'm actually blocking the third string from making noise after I've played the sixth fret by having my first finger kind of touching it, if you can see there. So this makes it nice and clean. Really follow this picking sequence to make it nice and easy for yourself. So you're always doing a downstroke on the sixth fret and you're always doing an upstroke when you return back to the second string fourth fret. Now I cheat actually for that last bit, just those last two notes. I actually do a down, down, so economy picking. So bear that in mind if you struggle with the next bit. So the next bit is. So we're going to do two semi-quavers, down up on the fourth fret of the third string with our first finger. We then go to the sixth fret on the fourth string with our third finger and we pick it once as a downstroke. And this sixth fret is going to be a quaver. So we've got one E and a. We're then going to bar the fourth fret with our first finger on the third and second string. We're going to play this twice both strings. We're going to return to the sixth fret and we're going to repeat that idea four times altogether. All together. We're then going to lay our third finger flat and we're going to bar the sixth fret, so third and second string, and then return back to picking just the sixth fret on the fourth string on its own. So third and second string, bar in with your third finger. All together. And other than the semi-quavers at the very beginning, down up, everything else is a downstroke. Down up, down. Then what happens is it does this, kind of similar. So you go in fourth fret on the third string with your first finger, third finger, sixth fret on the fourth string. So, so far you got. We're then going to bar the fourth fret again, third and second strings, but we're going to bar and play three times that fourth fret. Return to the sixth fret on the fourth string. And then we're going to go back to the fourth fret, but this time just play it once. And then back to the sixth fret on the fourth string. So this all together is. Then what happens is we do this. So we're going fourth fret on the third string with our first finger, sixth fret on the same string with our third finger. But you're going to play this kind of like staccato. 
kind of like that. And then you're going to do a bend on the sixth fret, a full step. Let it return back to pitch on the sixth fret. So all together. We then go back to the fourth fret. And we're going to let the note slide up to nowhere. But then we're going to let go of the string all together to get the open string of that string ringing out. It almost sounds like a mistake on Kirk Hammett's part, but you hear it evidently in the mix. And then, you're going to reach for the 12th fret on the first string with your first finger. And that's kind of like a semi-quaver at the very end of the bar. Next, we are on to solo part two. But here's what solo part one sounds like all together, nice and slow. So that's how it sounds slow. So as you saw, we finished on the 12th fret with our first finger on the top string. So that is just before the start of the new bar. Um, but make no mistake, this is part of the lick. So we've already started with note one, which is like a semi-quaver, and we're playing that note as an upstroke. We're then going to play this type of idea. So what we're doing is we're going 17 with our little finger on the top string, pulling off to 12, so we get 12 is with our first finger. We're then going to play the 15th fret with our second finger. At least that's what I choose. You can use your third finger if you want, but I prefer the second. Downstroke. And then we go back to the 12th fret with an upstroke on the top string. But from here on in, similar to before with the previous lick, we're going to go 12, 17, 12. Similar to the idea of four, seven, four, like before. So, so far. And then we're going to go back to the 15th fret as usual. Downstroke. So, that is what keeps repeating. 12, 17, 12, 15. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we're going to finish on the 12th fret on its own. So all together, pick 17, pull off the 12, pick 15, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pick 12 on its own but don't forget like i said before we ended on 12 in part one so really if we factor in that it's so that's a lick just to try and get used to full speed so for the next part it changes from instead of doing this or that being the main theme to this so what we're doing is we're going 17 12 15 on the second string both for downstrokes, then back to 12. We're then going to play 17, 12 twice. 17, 12, 17, 12. 15 on the second string as usual, then back to 12. So we've got 17, 12, 15, 12, 17, 12, 17, 12, 15, 12. Then we're going to repeat that 17, 12, 17, 12, 15, 12. Next bar. So the first half is almost the same as the last bar that we just did. 17, 12, 15, 12, 17, 12. But instead of doing 17, 12 again, it's just going to play 12, 12. So what we get is 17, 12, 15, 12, 17, 12, 12, 12. And we're doing a down up for that bit, for the 12, 12. So, so far. 17, 12, 15, 12, 17, 12, 12, 12. We're then going to play 17, 12, 17, 12. So we've got. We then go to the 15th fret on the second string with our little finger this time going to pick it twice down up we're then going to go to the 12th fret and we're going to pick it twice down up so we've got slow fast now the interesting thing is this bit Kirk Hammett doesn't do quite so clean um, especially the 15th fret right next up we're going to be on 15 now with our first finger and we're going to do a ghost note here, like that. So we slide into the 12th fret with our first finger. We're then going to play the 15th fret of the third string with our third finger. We're then going to play the 12th fret on both the third and second string with our first finger. Down, up, down. We're then going to play an upstroke on the 14th fret of the fourth string with our third finger. We're then going to return back to the 12th fret on the third string with our first finger. Down. We're now going to play the 14th fret on the same string, so the third string with our third finger, and we're going to bend the string up a whole step, return it back to pitch, back up, 
a full step and return it back to pitch. And then reach over and play the 14th fret on the fourth string. So, like that. This whole bit, full speed. Next up it does this. That was full speed, slow speed. So what we're doing is we're playing an upstroke on the 12th fret of the second string. We're then going to the 14th fret on the third string, downstroke with our third finger. 12th fret on the same string, upstroke, first finger. 14th fret, fourth string, third finger, downstroke. Back to the 12th fret on the third string, first finger upstroke, and then back again to the 14th fret on the 4th string, 3rd finger downstroke, vibrato. So all together we've got... That was at slow speed, full speed. It then does exactly the same thing as we did before, but instead of going and sliding from the 15th fret to the 12th fret, you just start on 12. Like that. And then to finish it off, full step pre-bend on the 14th fret, we're going to pick it three times after we've let the bend return back to pitch. Like that. And then we go to the 12th fret on the same string. As a slide, no vibrato. Like that. So crush it each, one, two, three, four. So all together for solo part two. Kind of like that. And we, for part two, are in E minor pentatonic. So we've actually changed modally. Right, solo part three. We're now actually going to change modally again. This time we're going to be in F sharp Dorian. Or you could say F sharp Aeolian. It depends. Kirk's treating it like F sharp Dorian. But actually, it's clashing with the rhythm that James Hetfield's doing. And the reason for this is... When Kirk is playing the fourth fret on the second string, that's a C sharp. But James Hetfield in the rhythm section is playing a C. So there's a clash there. But anyway, right, so first things first, what we're going to do, we're going to play in our F sharp minor pentatonic position, I suppose you could say, which is. And what we're going to do is we're going to play the fourth fret with our third finger on the third string. There's a full step bend. It's quite a quick bend. Then what we do is we go to the second fret on the second string with our first finger and we pick that too, so we've got. We then are going to do a pull off, starting on the fifth fret with our little finger on the second string, to the second fret with our first finger on the second string. We're then going to return back to the fourth fret with our third finger on the third string, so. Quaver, quaver, semi-quaver both, five and two, and then quaver again on the fourth fret. And then what we're going to do, is we're going to reach with our second finger over to the fourth fret of the fifth string. And then we're going to play the fourth fret on the fourth string with our third finger. And then we're going to flatten our first finger, so barring the second fret on the third and second strings, like that. And then we're going to play the fourth fret on the third string with our third finger. So this whole bar sounds like this. Slow. Right, we're on a brand new day today. Uh, it got late when I was recording, up to that point we were just at. So let's carry on. So here's how that bar sounds at full speed. And a little pointer is when you go into the fourth fret on the fifth and fourth strings, try and palm mute it. Kind of like that. Right, for the next bar, we're doing this. We're doing two sets of crotchet and a halves as a, well, a pre bend actually on the fourth fret of the third string. One and two and three and. And we're doing this as downstrokes. So after the two crotchet and a halves, we then do a crotchet on its own. Another pre-bend basically on the fourth fret. It's gonna last a little bit shorter obviously with it being a crotchet versus a crotchet and a half for the previous two. So we get one and two and three and four and that type of idea. So we're making sure to do a bend before we pick. When we pick, we just let the bend return back to pitch on the fourth fret. Next bar. This is a little bit weird with timing. So it does another pre-bend on the fourth fret, full step, for basically a crotchet in half, 
But then what it does is something a little bit weird. So one and two. That kind of rhythm slow. So after you've done the pre-bend on the fourth fret of the third string, as a downstroke yet again. But it does a crotchet in length. We're then going to go to the second fret on the third string. We're going to pick it as a downstroke, first finger. Hammer onto the fourth fret, third finger. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the fourth fret on the fourth string. Now you can pick this or do it as a hammer on from nowhere, which just means pressing down nice and hard and not picking it. So we get two, four, four. And I'm going to use my second finger to reach that fourth fret on the fourth string. It'll just help things be a little bit quicker like that. We then return back to the second fret on the third string um, and we pick it again. So you get that kind of idea. Two, four, four, two. And then picking it yet again. It's up to you what direction you choose to pick that second fret at the end. Could be a downstroke and upstroke. Uh, and an upstroke makes it a little bit quicker. So we get one and two. It's super, super quick. It almost sounds like um, just mess when Kirk Hammett does this bit here. But from what I can pick out, and it is really hard to hear because this whole thing's palm muted like, like that. It sounds like two, four, four, two. That type of thing. That's speed. One. And you gotta be so quick going to this next note we're going to look at. Um, so think of that as its own little grouping. Then we're going to go to the fourth fret on the fifth string with our third finger. And what we're going to do is we're going to pick this once. I'm doing a downstroke. Needs to be that quick reaching this note that we're on. Then we go to the second fret on the fourth string with our first finger. You can do that as a downstroke again. And then we're going to go to the fourth fret on the fourth string. So all together. That idea. Kind of weird the timing on that one. You just have to listen to the song. Right, next bar. We're going to play the same note that we finished off on. Fourth fret on the fourth string. We're going to play it three times this time as quavers. Set of downstrokes like that. Then we're going to play the second fret barred again across the third and second strings with our first finger. So we get four, 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 two. And here we're going to play a crotchet. So we got one and two and three. So everything in this bar so far is a downstroke. When we go to the fourth fret on the fourth string, we're going to do an upstroke, returning from the second fret. So what we get is one and two and three and. Just makes things a little bit quicker, doing an upstroke there. We're then going to return back to the second fret on the fourth string, and we're going to palm mute this time and play this note twice. Really heavy palm mute like that. So this bar altogether is one and two and three and four and. Full speed. Next bar, a little bit confusing with timing. Sounds like this. So what we're going to do, we're going to hammer on from the second fret on the fourth string with our first finger to the fourth fret on the same string with our third finger. Downstroke. It's going to be one and, so quavers yet again. We're then going to bar yet again the second fret on the third and second strings with our first finger. Like that. One and two. But this is going to be a dotted quaver. So a little bit weird in terms of timing. Uh, we've not had a dotted quaver before so far. So we're going one E and a two E and a. It's really hard to distinguish this in the mix because Kirk Hammett's doing lots of mutes on this fourth string. We're now going to keep repeating the same idea, going back and forth between barring the second fret on the third and second strings with our first finger, returning back to that fourth fret. But this time we're not going to have any dotted quavers or semi-quavers like we had last time on the fourth fret of the fourth string. Everything's just going to be quavers. So after your... It just sounds like that. We're going back to two, back to four. Back to two, back to four. Fast. Next bar, everything's in quavers and crotchets. So we're going to do a hammer on from the second fret on the fourth string to the fourth fret on the same string yet again, quavers. We're then going to do a mute on this string as a quaver two. So it's one and two, one and two. Cause I can't really hear a note in the mix at this point. It sounds like he's just trying to get his bearings yet again um, after that weird timing before in the previous bar. So we're going one and two. We're now going to bar the second fret across the third and second strings with our first finger yet again for a whole crotchet. So it's going to be one and two and three. And we're going to do an upstroke on this second fret. Like that. We're then going to return back to the fourth fret as a downstroke. That's going to be a quaver long. So one and two and three and. We're then going to do this, we're going to return back to the 2nd fret barred as an upstroke. 
but then we're going to bar our third finger across the third and second strings on the fourth fret as a downstroke, as quavers. So what we get is one and two and three and four and, there you go, full speed. Okay, last two bars before the solo melody, and then we finish part three. So in the new bar, we're going to stay on the fourth fret, barring like we were before. We're going to do an upstroke, and we're going to kind of do like a half step bend, both strings in fact, like that. I don't think it's quite a half step bend, but yeah, he's not really thinking of a particular pitch, I think, when he's doing this bend. So it sounds a little out of tune, but hey ho. That's gonna be for a crotchet, one and. Then we're going to go to the second fret, on the same string, so third string, and we're going to play that as an upstroke. So all together we've got up, up. We're then going to go to the fourth fret on the fourth string, pick that as a downstroke. So, so far we've got one and two and. We're then going to return back to the second fret, barring, as an upstroke, so. We've got that so far. We're then going to return to the fourth fret without bending this time. And then we're going to bend a half set bend yet again as a crotchet again. So, so far we've got that kind of idea. So actually you're only doing a half step bend on the first note of this bar and a half step bend on the last note of this bar, both of which are on the fourth fret barred across the third and second strings with your third finger. So in the next bar, we're going to play the second fret on the third string again as an upstroke. We're then going to play the fourth fret on the fourth string with our third finger as a downstroke. We're then going to return to the second fret barred across the third and second strings yet again. This time we're going to play it twice. This time is an up down. So, so far in this new bar, we've got up, down, up, down. Or in other words, two, four, two, two, if we're talking about the frets. And then we go to the fourth fret yet again with our third finger on the fourth string. This will be as an upstroke. We then return to barring on the second fret, third and second string for the very last time as a downstroke. And this time, instead of returning to four, we're going to go to five, so fret five on the fourth string. And this is going to be as an upstroke. So for this whole bar, we get this. Full speed. And to show you just how these last two bars of part three sound all together, because they are heavily linked, this is how it sounds. That's how it sounds. So solo part three altogether sounds like this at the full speed. You might see that I'm doing some slight variation in the picking there, but ignore that. The picking that I've recommended and you see in the tabs is what I think is the best way to do it. Right, so we're now into the solo melody. So at this point, I kind of consider that the solo's over. It should really be doing this. In this part of the fretboard, you would think coming out of being in this area the whole time in solo part three, but in the official music video, Kirk is over here, I noticed. So you can play this solo melody like this here. if you want to. But I'm gonna show you the way Kirk seems to do it, which is over here, like I said, in the official music video. It doesn't really matter if they sound exactly the same, but just for accuracy um, and consistency's sake, let's, uh, let's show you this way. So once you've played the fifth fret in the last bar, so the last note for solo three, you're going to play the fourth fret on the fourth string with your third finger. You're then going to shift over with your third finger to the sixth fret on the third string. And you're gonna play that once as well. So, so far we've got now that seems a bit weird, but we're only using our third finger for these two notes, even though it's a bit uncomfortable because we ended up with our little finger uh, before. So we're then going to use our first finger and shift again over to the seventh fret on the fourth string. We're then going to play the ninth fret on the same string, so the fourth string with our third finger. So, so far we've got. We're now going to reach with our second finger over to the ninth fret of the fifth string, and we're going to do a ghost note, and we're going to slide to seven with this ghost note. So what we've got so far is, and we're making sure that we're adding vibrato on that seventh fret, because you're gonna be on it for a little while, so. 
Then what we're going to do, we're going to be on the 10th fret of the fourth string with our little finger. So this is our flat five interval. And this is going to be a crotchet dotted, or should I say a dotted crotchet. <laughs> One and two. We're then going to go to the ninth fret on the same string with our third finger. Again, dotted crotchet. So we got one and two and three and. We're then going to play just a crotchet on its own for beat four in this bar with our first finger. So that's seventh fret on the same string. Once we've gone, we're then going to slide from where we were for the seventh fret to the eleventh fret and give it some vibrato. So for this bit, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. In terms of picking, it's up to you what you want to do. So all together for this solo melody so far. There we go. Then what we do is we repeat that all over again, but instead of starting here, which doesn't make sense, because it's all the way in a different position, we're going to just play those same notes here. So that is your ninth fret with your first finger on the fifth string and your 11th fret on the 4th string with your 3rd finger. Everything else stays the same, so now it would look like this. Now when we get up to here, instead of going to 11, we're going to go to the 9th fret on the 5th string. And I should also say we should be sliding to that 9th fret, instead of just picking it, so it should be. if we're going to get really technical and precise about it. So all together, we have this. Nice and slow. Something like that. It repeats that all over again, um, but we're not going to do that. We're going to now play the harmony. So this is the other lead part on the top. This harmony is really quiet in the mix, which is a bit of a shame because it's really cool. So what we're going to do, I think, and this is just my interpretation, that for the harmony, it's playing two notes at once. So we're going to bar the 11th fret on the fourth and third string with our third finger. This is going to be for a dotted crotchet, one and two. We're then going to play the 11th fret on its own on the third string. So one and two and three and another dotted crotchet. We're then going to play the 11th fret on the fourth string again, but this is just going to be for a crotchet. So we get one and two and three and four and. We're then going to go to the ninth fret on the third string with our first finger. And now we're going to do a ghost note on the 11th fret with our third finger on the fourth string to the ninth fret on the same string like that. So a really quick slide because there's a ghost note on the 11th fret. So all together we get one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And I should say, don't forget that vibrato. Then what happens, it returns to the ninth fret on the third string again with our first finger. We're actually going to pick it twice this time. And these are dotted crotches again. One and two and three and. We're then going to play the 11th fret on the fourth string with our third finger. And that was for a crotchet, by the way. And then in the next bar, we slide with a ghost note from nine to 11. So all together, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two, three and four and. We then do this bit all over again. But what we're going to do then is we're going to Instead of doing the, we don't do that. We go third string, 12th fret, little finger, dotted crotchet, 11th fret, dotted crotchet, one and two and three and. We then go to the ninth fret. This is all on the same string, so the third string, crotchet. We get one and two and three and four and. We're going to do that three times. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. We then take that exact same shape, so little finger, third finger, first finger, and we take it up a fret and up a string. So instead of 12, 11, 9, we're going to be on the second string rather than the third string, and we're going to be on 13, 12, 10. And we're going to play this twice. And then to finish it off, we're going to play the 11th fret. And we're going to let this 11th fret ring out with vibrato for a whole three bars. One, two, 
three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So altogether, at a slow speed for this um, harmony. One and two and three and four and 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 one, two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And we're going to let that 11th fret ring out with feedback if needs be. That's what it does on the record. Full speed now. And there we go. That is the whole entire solo.